Welcome to the Deal Machine Real Estate Investing Podcast, where we help ambitious W-2 employees who want to leave their job in the next 12 months, earn a million dollars per year, drive their dream car, pursue their passions, and take control of their life. We'll actually teach you by interviewing people who have replaced their W-2 income through the proven business model of wholesaling real estate, a way to earn big checks by finding discounted real estate and passing it off to an investor who has money and can give you a $25,000 finder's fee for finding the deal. We're going to give you two weekly interviews plus one expert-led masterclass in front of a live Q&A audience of the Deal Machine community, people who are trying to get this journey done themselves. My co-host is Ryan Haywood, whose sales job was cut when his commissions were cut in 2019, so he quit. And his wife was pregnant at the time, so he actually took a 14-day wholesaling challenge and made 8500 bucks and has gone on to do 400 deals since then in St. Joseph, Missouri. I'm David Lecco, and I created a process for finding off-market deals that has helped people close 10,000 deals in all 50 states, which turned into the software platform Deal Machine. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Deal Machine Real Estate Investing Podcast, where if you're in a job that you hate, we can help you build a life you love through the proven business model of wholesaling real estates. We interview experts who have actually done the exact same thing. They've created an incredible life through wholesaling real estate. And today we've got a very special guest, but make sure you're subscribed to this podcast and leave us a review to help us make more content for you to get you to financial freedom. So our special guest is Charles Hernandez, AKA Uncle Charles, and he hails from San Antonio, Texas. He's actually done over a thousand wholesale deals. And on his very first one, I think has made the most money of anyone we've interviewed so far in 55 episodes of this podcast, $25,000 on his first wholesale deal. The Deal Machine REI Podcast. Everything you need to know to get started in real estate investing. Charles, I know it's been a while since you did that, right? Because you did a thousand deals, but can you tell us exactly what you were looking for and how you ended up making $25,000. Well, you know, I, back in 2012, um, well, 2011, I started a company called Home Buying Home Selling, and uh, it was a royalty company. So primarily royalty, we're doing, uh, my partner and I, Michael, we're doing uh, royalty deals. And we got into flipping, you know, I pulled a gun on on, on, on uh, doing a flip, and uh, that's a whole other story. It's a funny story, to be honest with you. And, uh, you know, I was really big into creative stuff because I come from the mortgage industry. So I was doing a lot of creative, creative uh, deals. And so I, that's where my background came from. So, you know, we're always, we're always looking for how to put deals together. We started hearing about this thing called wholesaling. This is back in 2012, but nobody would share with you what it was. Nobody would talk to you. Nobody would share information like you do, you know, to, all, to everybody, you know, that's willing to listen. So we started focusing on the companies that did it. And we started doing uh, reverse engineering, you know, looking up their deals and trying to get on their email li email list so we could track those deals that they were trying to sell to us. And then we figured out what it was. You're saying other wholesalers. Yeah. You were, you were trying to understand how they did it. Yeah, because nobody would tell you. So I, I, I don't want to say the company, but it's probably one of the largest wholesaling companies um, in the nation. And, and they're here in San Antonio. So they would send us their lists so we could buy their deals, but they wouldn't tell us how to wholesale. And so they have a very unique way of wholesaling, to be honest with you. And so we started tracking those deals to see how they would how they would shake out, you know, and, and with the with the county recorder. And then eventually we learned, guys, and I'm gonna tell you some these you know, this podcast is so important for you to to really grasp information. Let me tell you why. Because back then, we didn't know what type of contract to use. We didn't know what an assignment was. We didn't even know the difference between an assignment and a contract. Nobody would tell you. And we Can you explain what wholesaling is to somebody that doesn't even know what that is? Wholesaling is this important word. This is my analogy. It's finding someone that needs a solution. You, to bring a solution. They're losing the property, taxes, maybe mortgages. They inherited the property. It's a vacant property. Something's going on with that property or something's going on with them. Problems with people or problems with properties. And you make them an offer. 
a discounted offer. You have to know your numbers. And once you make this offer and they accept, you're going to find a buyer, an investor rather, to sell that contract to them. You have a contract and you have an assignment. All you're doing is selling paper. You never bought the house. We put $10 on that contract, our very first contract, and we made shy $25,000 on our very first deal, and this was over 12 years ago. So the $10 was the earnest money, right? What Do you remember what type of trouble this person had that you were solving by buying their house? They were losing it to taxes. So it, it all kind of came together at one time when we were trying to understand the whole setting process, and we used to really hunt. Or I shouldn't say the word hunt, but we used to really canvas a neighborhood here in town called Beacon Hill, which is kind of, you know, almost historical, but not historical, on its way to being historical. And at the time, like, we got really, really good. We knew every single house in that neighborhood, every single, we had talked to almost everybody in there. And a lady's, like, contacted us, and she's like, hey, I'm losing my property. The taxes, I think she owed shy of almost 25000 We offered her 25000 and uh, and uh, it was a great deal. We just wholesaled the paper, and she got paid. We got paid. The tax office got paid. And it was a fabulous deal. So she took twenty five thousand, and whoever bought the property also paid the taxes. Yeah, they paid the taxes, and they paid us. Because the property, <laughs> Beacon Hill at the time was, you know, it, it's not historical, but people want to flip in there. There was a lot of people moving here from California, and we knew this. So we were flipping. And the returns in that neighborhood were very, very high. I mean, people were selling properties in there for pennies on the dollar. But but, but once you rehab them, because we're talking about 1924 houses, 1940, once you rehab them, they were selling for like 320, 350. So so we found an investor who was willing to take the deal. We, Truth be told, we should have probably flipped it ourselves. Gotcha. So when you say that everybody in that neighborhood knew you, is it because you had previously like not knocked on their doors? Yes. We used to do a lot of door knocking back then before, before really good tools like yours. We did a lot of what, door knocking. What, what, what would you have said whenever somebody came to the door? It, it goes something like this. Um, hello, may I speak to Mr. Smith? Hi, Mr. Smith. My name is Charles. I'm with home by old Southern here in San Antonio. I was just coming out to chat with you to see if there's anything we could do to help. I'm not sure if you know, but this property is actually on a list with, with the county for sale. I think they're trying to auction it. I'm not sure if you know this. And and uh, and, and we like to fight with the county all the time and lenders. And so we like to come off our services. And then and, and, and if you have a few minutes, can I share that with you? And you'd be surprised how many people would do that. Now, we use the approach... It wasn't an indirect approach. So we didn't just tell them, hey, your property is being foreclosed. Like a lot of people do that and people get upset because nobody wants to be told something that's going to upset them. So we use an indirect approach. We always ask that we could share it with them our solutions or our options. And most of the time they were very receptive. We did this on the phone also with folks. So, Gotcha. Okay. So that's very easy conversation. You're not trying to convince them anything. You're just letting them know a fact, and did most of them know their house was on a list like that? The people that were in the homes, yes. The people that we had to track down, which we got really good at, uh, they didn't know, because they were usually heirs that were some other part of the country. They they had Some of them they had an idea they had airship. Okay, got it. Interesting. So once you had that under contract, she owed 25000 in taxes. You offered her 25000 how did you then sell that deal? How did you, because because you were under contract to buy it yourself. Yeah. And then you, you got a finder's fee for passing it off to someone else. Yeah, so when we first did the contract, it was just to purchase it. We were actually thinking about doing the deal ourselves. And ironically, and I, f- I forget the address, but it's, it's on Augurita Street here in Be- Beacon Hill. I'll tell you a quick little thing. That particular house... There's a video of it online. It happened to be the house where, the, where Robert Frost, I think he was a novelist in the 1940s, had actually lived there um, because he was he, he picked San Antonio to live in for about six months because his daughter was born in school in Monterey. So that house, everybody knows it. 
and it just happened to be our first house. And what we did, we contracted to to purchase it, but on further inspection, I mean, we probably should have done it. It just, it was, it was a very, it, it, it was going to be too much because the city wanted to keep the authenticity of the house. It really, even though it wasn't historical, they didn't want us to make too much changes. And right around that time, we were exploring wholesaling. And luckily, there was a gentleman that finally put all the pieces together and he said, why don't you guys just assign it? And we were like, what, what is assigning? Well, it's wholesaling. And what do you mean? Assigning, wholesaling. It's the same thing. You're wholesaling via an assignment. The assignment is the vehicle. You have that contract. Just, you know, we didn't have and or assigned to the time on it. And, 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 and so the very first one we did, we didn't put at or signs on it, which you should today. And then we just got, we created a, an assignment sheet that we found online. So it, it's like a normal contract. Yeah. And there's a line in the normal contract that specifically says this contract can be assigned to yeah. someone else. Or you can write gotcha. it in. Yeah. Yeah. And so we created our own generic assignment sheet, which today our, our assignment sheets are very detailed. And uh, we wholesale. Ironically, this is a funny story. We ironically wholesaled it to the very company who we would research. I'm sure you know who they are. That we would research and try to figure out how they were wholesaling. It was very funny. Now that I think about it. Sorry, I know exactly which company you're talking about, but that's that is funny. Yeah. All right. So once you had the twenty five thousand dollars from that, what did you do next? Well, once once we understood the concept, we were still a little we were still a little shaky about it, uh, and and, I, and I'll expand a little bit on this for all of you all of you who are doubting yourself, and you just you just think you can't get it done. Well, let me tell you something. You're on the right podcast, and and I want to give you guys a plug. You know, the only machine is the right system to get the right answers. But I swear to you, it took us a lot of hours just to understand a very simple concept of wholesaling. So once we made the money, because we were already making money on the road team, we were making money on the flips, we we dove in. But I'm going to tell you something. Had there been tools back then that we could use to make our life easier, we would have saved many, many hours of door knocking because we would go out every single day. And the most you could probably door knock in a city like San Antonio is about 15 doors a day. And if you're having conversations with folks, maybe eight. And there's a lot of driving around, a lot of sitting up all night, all night looking at properties, putting them on Google, on the Google Maps. It's It was very archaic. And so so we, locked, we, we spent a lot of time, we wasted a lot of time doing that. Well, that's why I made the tool. Basically, when I started, everyone said you need to drive around, look for rundown properties, then look up who owns the property and send them letters. Yeah. And so I struggled with follow-up. I would drive around constantly and write down addresses, but I wasn't looking up who owned the property and wasn't sending letters because that was kind of time consuming and it was less fun. And uh, so, yeah, that's that's why I made you know the tools to help out with that process and get my follow through handled so i knew those letters were going to go out that's awesome of course i mean what do you what do you primarily do for marketing today i i know you've you've done a thousand yeah i mean there was years where we would knock out you know 120 130 wholesale deals so that's how we got to that number over the last 12 years um but I mean, there was years where we only hit you know 80 you know deals or so, you know, people think, people think that those numbers are not realistic, but they are realistic. I know other people that do that, that, that and much more. What I've learned in all my years of doing this is it's not so much doing quantity, but doing quality. And as the market has shifted over the last 10 years and people have become more aware of you know, what real estate or i.e. real estate wholesaling can bring to the table. There's a lot more folks in the business, so it, it, it's become a little more difficult to, to get those big pops. It's become a little bit more difficult to do the door knocking. So you have to have systems 
that will allow you to be the first. You have to have systems that will allow you to garner information first. I mean, let's compare this for a second. Your system, and please uh, qualify it if I, if I get something wrong. But I'm pretty sure we're on point. Your system will allow someone to do it virtually or, you know, um, in person. Yeah, in person or virtually. You can, you can get scroll the through, walk through. Exactly. You yeah. can get the information on the spot. You can call them on the spot. You can send right. a mail on the spot as opposed to, hey, I'm going to be up all night putting all these properties to the spreadsheet. We're going to get up early in the morning. We're going to go drive around and knock on doors, have conversations with with one person. When and, and with your system, you might have already hit a whole bunch of people by the time I get to the very first person in the morning. So the equity is different in, in using those, the archaic system and using a more advanced system. You're going to get there faster. Totally. What was so appealing to you about wholesaling once you figured it out compared to doing the typical, you were agents, right? You were helping people buy and sell their home as agents. Well, Michael was an agent and, uh, and, uh, we had set a goal that he would become broker at the time. There was a lot of regulation coming in because of the crash, you know, the government was, had, had pretty much destroyed the, the, the lending business, which I had been in and Michael, they, uh, track here in Texas had increased from direct going direct to broker to having like four years on your belt. So there was a lot of changes going on. And, um, the thing is I couldn't get licensed. I couldn't get licensed because, you know, I had a troubled past and, uh, but I'm a real resourceful guy. I do risk research and I really, I realized that I could own a real estate company. I just couldn't practice real estate. And, uh, that's what I did. I owned the company. And so Michael took care of the licensing stuff. And, and so he became broker and then he took care of, the, you know, everything. And I took care of the, the flipping stuff. And together we dove in to the wholesaling. And then of course, all the other stuff that we do, like sub two, creative financing. But once we realized what wholesaling brought to the table, we understood that wholesaling is the great equalizer. And the reason it's the great equalizer is because I say to people, it doesn't care where you come from. It doesn't care what you look like, what color your skin is, what your beliefs are. Because I've seen folks that at any given day would never have a meeting of the minds. And I've seen folks who look like they just got out of, you know, a special place that people go to where they do bad things and, and, and sit down and talk to lawyers and doctors about doing a deal. Wholesaling and real estate in general has no boundaries for anyone. If you got a deal, someone's going to buy it, and and it's a great equalizer. That's what I believe about real estate and wholesaling in general. And I know you've actually hosted, you're passionate about helping people learn this business because you actually hosted an event last year called Wholesaling Live, and you're doing it again this year. Yeah. And I like that it's about getting a deal, even at the event, like walking through, taking the actions that you need to do in order to get that first deal. What are some things that people miss when they're trying to do this on their own? Like, what are the struggles they have and how can they overcome that to get their first deal? Yeah, so uh, I won't go into the, the full dynamics of the event yet until you're ready, but I like the, the second part of your question. I'll answer that one first. You know, a lot of folks in this, in this that I meet, they want to do this business. You know, they want something different. They made mistakes. They missed the opportunity, you know, and they're stuck doing nine to five. They don't believe that they can have, that they can change, you know, their, 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 you know, their tomorrow. The beautiful thing about, about wholesaling or, or once you learn other strategies in real estate is that you can make money now right now, tomorrow, next month. And you can go from working nine to five. I use this analogy, let me explain. I know folks that work at, I won't say their name, but it's, it's a big bank here in San Antonio. It's, it's big, it's a military bank. The majority of them have bachelor's degrees, master's degrees. 
I know some of them that make $25 an hour. They probably make more now. But that's $4,333 a month, 40 hours a week of grueling work. And you better be on top of your game and you better be on time. Now, that's gross. They still got to take out taxes. They still got to take out 401, insurance. You're probably coming home with about $3,500 $3, a month. You can't live on $3,500 a month today unless you are willing to, to have a very um, meager lifestyle. Now, I don't need a glamorous lifestyle, but I need to make at least $10,000 a month, $12,000 a month so that I can make sure I have a nice car that I want to drive. My wife has a nice car I want to drive. I have a nice house. That's just to live on. I mean, you, you have to understand that wholesaling and using tools that are important for this type of business, like yours, David, is can change anybody's life. And if, and if you're willing to take just a little bit of time to get off the Netflix, if you're willing to take a little bit of time to stay out of the out of the sports bars, or well, whatever it is that takes up your time, and just learn. Learn a little bit about this business. I promise you can change your life. And that's what we're about. We, you know, I know you guys share a lot of content, a lot of education for folks who try to change their lives. And and we don't have an awesome system like yours, which which I wish I did. <laughs> but uh but if we could do it in, in another way, you know, by by having people work with us and showing them, you know, the tools that they need. Then, then what that does for us, one, people ask me, "What Charles? Why do you get out of this?" I get a lot out of it. Do I get do I get a special feeding? Of course, but let's talk business, real business. I get deals. I get to push deals to people. I get to network with new folks almost every day. It's 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 a beautiful thing, man. Once you get involved. So you would say that the number one reason why somebody doesn't have success is because they don't make time to learn. I think that I think that folks I think that folks think it's very hard to do and and they have limited beliefs, you know, or or it's sad, you know, they just they just don't understand, you know. You know, I, I, look, sometimes I have I have folks that work for me in the office and I have folks me they come to me and they're like, Man, I wanna do this, I wanna do this and I see them, you know, on Saturday, on Sunday at the river or, you know, whatever they're doing. And and I have a private group that people, you know, like we talk and stuff. And I say to them, look, this is just me. There's guys that I know that are way more successful than I am. And I'm not telling you to be like me. But I'm on tilt every day. I'm up at six in the morning. I'm already answering emails. I'm looking at deals. I'm 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 trying to get that out of the way. I'm meeting people early in the morning. If I'm here if I'm here early in the morning, it's because I didn't meet nobody. If I don't get here tonight, 30s, it's because I already met three or four people in the morning at a coffee shop. I'm on tilt all day long. All day long, I'm doing real estate, talking to people, deals, deals. When I get home, I spend some time with my wife. I eat with her. And then nine times out of 10, I'm probably going to get back on for another couple hours to look at deals and answer people. That's the difference. That's the difference. If, if, a lot of folks, you get the most important things done first. Well, a lot of folks tell me, "Well, Charles, I thought I thought this business gives you, you know, um, it gives you the latitude to be free and stuff." It does. I'm just not ready to be free yet. I want to go. You're excited about the, the. You're you're still growing, right? You you love that. You love working the business. It's actually something you enjoy. I've given myself eight more years, and in eight in those eight years. Or, or maybe six, I'm going hard. I'm going to, every single day, I'm going, I'm on tilt. And when the day I walk away and, and the Lord blesses me to have, you know, the time that, that, uh, that, 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 uh, that I want, then, then I walk away. The, the reason for me is a little bit different. It's, it goes back to what we shared before we got online. You know, I had a trouble pass and I feel like I'm behind all the time. I feel like I got to, I, I, I don't have time to be as, and fly to Cancun every other every other week and and stuff like that. I got I got to go hard right now because I got stuff to take care of. I got a legacy to take care of. I got three grandkids. I want to make sure my wife's being taken care of. If, if the good Lord calls me up, and if, if I get that time that I'm going to have, I want to have 
peace. I want to be able to do what I want to do. So right now, if you guys are half-assing this, or if you're saying, you know, I'll get to it tomorrow, those are, you're going up against dudes like me, dudes like David. You know, the people that you employ, the people I employ, that's who you're going up against. But it doesn't mean that you can't get there. You just got to jump on the train, man. Please open up your podcast app right now and leave us a review and let us know what you thought of this episode. It means so much because the reviews help us get in front of more people. And the more people we can get in front of, the more we can help them achieve financial freedom. And we also get more energy to put more content out like this to help you. So by leaving us a review, it will give you more content to come to help you along in your journey. Thank you so much. Yes, yeah, so for somebody listening, though, your, your event is going to be about them doing action, right? They're not yes. going to sit and listen to how to do things, but you're going to walk them through steps that they they can take at the event to actually get a deal, right? Did you have somebody get a deal last year? Yes, we had. Uh, we actually did. We actually did uh, um, 17 contracts last year in two hours of talk time. The first hour, my first day, two hours, second second day, and there was a uh, 1.3 million in assignments. And just a real quick note, just to allude to what I was saying is, we wanted to do wholesale live where everybody had an experience, or not just come listen. We wanted the sponsors to tell the people, this is how it works, and then use it. And that's what we did. We put, we created a large, the largest boiler room for wholesaling last year. We're gonna try to do it again this year, and we're gonna make money. People will make money at this event. People will learn how to use your products, for example, Deal Machine, and we're going to use these items live. This is not an event where you're going to come and listen to folks just talk. This is an event where you're going to do, and there's going to be an opportunity to do wholesaling. You may never have done a deal. But there's going to be yeah. folks here to help you. Well, I love that it's action-focused because everyone I've interviewed on this podcast, they got a deal because they took action. And that's why I love this event so much. So it's coming up uh, September 15th and 16th wholesalinglive.io is the website. That's where you can check it out. And Charles, uh, we can have we can follow you on Instagram, right? Yes, sir. You can follow me on Instagram or any of my social media. It's real, R-E-I-L, real, Uncle Charles. Love that. At what stage of life did people start calling you uncle? About... Three, four years ago, there were some people here in San Antonio calling me Godfather of Real Estate. But I knew I was in the Godfather. I knew there was Ron the Grand. You got, you know, you got folks that have been in this business a long time. And I didn't want to disrespect anybody. So I had a few other people calling me, unk, unk, unk. So I kind of just like, you know what? Let me kill this Godfather thing. And so I went ahead and changed my handle to Uncle Charles. And it just stuck. I was trying to really, I was trying to get rid of that tag that people were doing that because I didn't want yeah I didn't want to just well it makes sense too the uncle wants to help you succeed the uncle is somebody you look up to and that's definitely the case with you I appreciate the time you, you gave us today Charles and I look forward to seeing you at Wholesaling Live it's going to be a pleasure thank you so much of course thanks for listening to the Deal Machine Real Estate Investing Podcast please leave us a review and follow along wherever you're listening to your podcast